teams remain after another great season of PSAL football in the Cup Division. Lane and Stuyvesant are all set for the title game that promises to be a good one. The 2012 PSAL Cup Division Championship starts right now on MSG Varsity. Springfield Gardens High, the host for this championship battle, featuring the top seed in the PSAL Cup division, Franklin K. Lane, and the very dangerous number two peg legs of Stuyvesant. And welcome to Queens, everybody. Thanks, as always, for joining us. I'm Pete Mulroy. Today on MSG Varsity, as you can see, it's a beautiful day for championship football, the 2012 Cup Division title game, number one lane, number two Stuyvesant. We're going to introduce you to two fantastic athletes momentarily, but got to let you know that these two teams have played this season back in week four. Number two seed and seven and two overall, the peg legs of Stuyvesant took that game 21 to eight since that moment. Both teams red hot, and the two best teams in the Cup Division are the two most deserving teams we'll see today for this title game between number one lane, number two Stuyvesant. Let's break it down for you and talk about the two best players for both teams we'll see today in our MSG Varsity postseason player spotlight. Eight and one lane will be led by a great running back today in Daniel Dwa, wanting to go out a champion. Dwa is great out of the backfield. He can line up as a receiver, and he's the leading tackler on the defensive secondary for a very, very good Knights defense. Keep an eye out for number two. He'll be all over the field on both sides of the ball today. Stuyvesant enters seven and two. Nathaniel Biggs led the way for the Peg Lake defense, notching nine tackles and a sack a couple nights ago in the semifinal victory. For the season, the senior, who's also a member of the baseball team, has 59 tackles, three sacks, and an interception offensively. 21 receptions, 375 receiving yards, and eight touchdowns. Stuyvesant Lane ready to go one final time today in Queens. The lineups and kickoff up next right here on MSG Varsity, your source for the 2012 Tri-State Area postseason. And welcome back to Springfield Gardens High School in Queens, New York. Number one lane, number two Stuyvesant getting ready to go. Head coach for number two Stuyvesant in his fifth season is Mark Strasser. He's done a nice job with this Stuyvesant team. That's seven and two overall, went six and two in the regular season. Number one lane, the Knights, eight one overall. Their head coach is Ingo Warren. He's in his fourth season. He's done a great job with this team that comes in really as the favorite in this game. They did, however, lose back in week four of the regular season to Stuyvesant, but this championship game, anything goes. Weather for today's game, you can probably hear it through the microphone, very windy, chilly. It's an absolute gorgeous day, football being a cold weather sport. The entire Stuyvesant coaching staff wearing shorts for today's game, but it is brisk. Everybody in the crowd bundled up, and this should be a fun one between number one lane and number two Stuyvesant. Kickoff just about to get set between number one lane, number two Stuyvesant. Thanks for being with us on MSG Varsity and MSGVarsity.com. Opening kickoff right to left. Bobbled at the 10-yard line by the Knights and then picked up by John Carlo de Jesus. And Lane's going to be backed up to start this game. There is a vicious win all around the field here at Springfield, the Gardens. And it's very evident down on the field. And that really paid dividends on that kickoff as you see the low driving kick so the number one lane Knights 8-1 overall 7-1 in the PSAL Cup Division during the regular season and he'll take the field on offense for the first time these are two teams that have already played back in the regular season week four as Rafael Hidalgo the junior quarterback for the Knights and his offense take the field for the first time introduce you to some of the starters momentarily outside handoff goes for Keith Rodriguez turning the corner to the 30 and tripped up at the 35 yard line good opening play of the game for Keith Rodriguez the senior bunch of touches during the regular season 170 rush yards you can add to that total 
after that nice running play that gets him out to the 37-yard line, ball spotted on the far hash. So a good way for Lane to open the game. I did mention this is the second meeting of the season between these two teams. Obviously, the Cup Division Championship, this being the most important game on the final day of the season in the championship. Lane actually fell to Stuyvesant in week four, 21 to eight. So here they are, good opening play of 30 yards. It's Rodriguez one more time, coming near side, spinning out of some traffic, and gets up to the 40. Forward progress will take him up to the 41-yard line. And we already mentioned the starting quarterback, Rafael Hidalgo. You've seen Keith Rodriguez, Daniel Dua, number two. He's a very good running back. One of the co-captains on this lane team. We'll see him a boatload today as you're introduced to the starters. This eight win lane team when you combine regular season, postseason. Stuyvesant is seven and two. And Coach Enga Warren in his fourth season for Lane has done a masterful job here this season for the Knights. Inside handoff taken up to the 44 yard line. Rashawn Donald. We'll see Rashawn. As a tailback, and he plays some safety defensively for Stuyvesant. Really all comes down to guys like Nathaniel Biggs. He's a phenomenal wide receiver. And he's all over the field defensively as you have a look at the starters for the Peg Lakes, who again are 7-2 overall regular and postseason combined. They went 6-2 during the regular season in the PSAL Cup division. And in motion comes to the near side, inside handoff for De Jesus, who had trouble with the opening kickoff, and he's driven back before he can get up to the 45-yard line. So a nice defensive effort there for Stuyvesant. And 45 left to go. I already mentioned the wind. You can probably hear it on my microphone. It's all over the place here. It would have been cold no matter what, obviously. We're only a couple of days away from the month of December. And I was down on the field talking with both coaches and head coach Mark Strasser for Stuyvesant. He's in his fifth season. They've been wearing shorts all year. And a big fourth down here for the Peg Legs defense. Directly up the middle, pushing the pile for the Knights. And they move that ball right up the gut on the Peg Legs for the first down. So they get inside Stuyvesant territory for the first time here this morning. And that's Danny Dua, 32 touches, make it 33. He's got 73 tackles on defense as well. Two defensive touchdowns, three interceptions, and five sacks. He is literally a do-it-all player. But getting back to the fact that the Stuyvesant coaching staff all wear shorts, have been doing it all year. It's nice when it's September. Not so nice in the dog days of November when it is freezing cold. And I actually told them that they're all nuts. But football is a cold weather sport, and there's quite honestly nothing like it, especially in championship tilts as this one comes to the near side for Donald. He's out at the 45-yard line, gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. And you have a look, I, and certainly the wind isn't helping, but there's so much adrenaline, you, even as a coach, and, I, and I, I think it's all the more evident as a coach, for the simple fact that you, you really can't control anything. You're not going out there to play. You can design the play calls, and the Stuyvesant coaching staff has done an unbelievable job, much like Lane has in a very competitive cup division. Two coaching staffs, two head coaches, and Coach Warren and Strasser that just know what they're doing. Across the 40, shy of the 34-yard line goes to Jesus. This is a team for a quarterback, Rafael Hidalgo, that relies on the run. Hidalgo's numbers just shy of 700 total passing yards this season. Nine touchdowns, eight picks. He's got three touchdowns with his legs. And when you have a running attack that features, at times, four in the backfield, like we'll see here, there's really no reason. Most of the time to put the ball in the air. Here's Dua straight ahead. And he's trying to push the pile forward like he did a couple of plays ago on a significant fourth down that he converted to move the change. This time he's hit by a sea of white and driven back. Eight minutes, 45 seconds remaining opening quarter. No score, but a pretty good looking drive for the top seeded Lane Knights. As they'll break the huddle and come back to the line. As the offense 
Back for the second down and six. Here comes straight forward to Waugh, gives inside and bobbing and weaving his way through traffic as to Jesus inside the 10 yard line. And taken down there, they'll actually put him back just shy of the 10 yard line, but a nice good hard piece of running by the junior. It's gonna be a first down for the Knights here after the good run by John Carlo De Jesus. Quick four minutes has passed here in the opening quarter. This game, of course, will be followed by the PSAL Bowl Division Championship between number one Grady and number two South Shore. First down here, this bobble snap hits the turf. And then a fight for it. Lane was the first one to pounce on it, so they'll maintain possession. But this one will be a loss of about 12, depending on where they spotted here. Snap came out a bit high. The slick ball with the, the cold weather. And their hands will freeze up a little bit, so that could lead to plays like that. Lane very fortunate to recover and keep this drive moving, but it, a loss of 12 on the play backs him up from the 11-yard line to the 23-yard line. Second down and long on the way. First down marker. He's just inside the two-yard line of the Peg Lakes. Nadal go back on the field. Side handoff. Here it comes near side for Jesus, and he is hit and dropped. In there on the tackle, Nathaniel Biggs. And Biggs is a young man, 59 tackles during the regular season, three sacks. An interception, a forced fumble, and recovery. So he filled the stat sheet defensively this season. He's also got eight receiving touchdowns. We'll see him plenty on offense when Stuyvesant gets the ball for the first time. But now a good job by Lane on this drive. They've had the ball for the entire duration of this first quarter. Six minutes and 50 seconds remaining. We're scoreless on this, the opening drive of the game between number one Lane and number two Stuyvesant. Thanks, as always, for being with us on MSG Varsity and MSGVarsity.com. Here's Dewa taking it to the outside, spinning out of some traffic. And then he's hit, driven back by Biggs again. Back-to-back -back plays where Nathaniel Biggs got in defensively. And we'll have another fourth down here for the Knights. Six minutes and 20 seconds remaining. This ball is spotted at the two-yard line. Again, the first down marker just inside the two-yard line. So fourth down and just less than 18 yards on the way for the Knights. It's Rashawn Donald who stands in the quarterback position now. And the motion is Dan Duas. And here comes Donald. Rolling out to the near side, across the 15 to the 10. Still on his feet, gets inside the 10. Ball came free. And the football was recovered by the peg legs. They had the night stopped anyway, so just a little better field position. And they'll put this at the 12-yard line. That's where the peg legs will start offensively for the first time here today. And the quarterback, Alan Mahmudov, takes the field for the first time. Trying to lead his 7-2 Stuyvesant peg legs to the Cup Division Championship. And he'll work out of the shotgun, and in motion goes to the far side. And outside pitch taken just shy of the 10-yard line. And we mentioned Mahmudov offensively, the quarterback for the peg legs. And He's got plenty of weapons to work with. Of course, we mentioned Nathaniel Biggs. Told you about his defensive stats. 21 catches this year, just shy of 400 yards, eight touchdowns. And he's really the leader on the outside for a very talented peg leg offensive unit. Five minutes, 10 seconds remaining. First quarter opening possession here for Stuyvesant after they stopped Lane. And this handoff gets up to the 15-yard line. Defensively for... Inga Warren and his Knights. Again, a very talented team. Blaine Patrick is senior defensive lineman, number 55. And keep an eye on him, one of the run stoppers on this team. And if 
Rafael Hidalgo is the starting quarterback. He's also the starting quarterback for the 8 1 Knights. And Akmudov rolling out to his right now, throws, pass complete. And then down to the turf, they'll rule it incomplete. It was enough for the first down. The first down mark is at the 20 yard line. That would have had him up just shy of the 25. So quick fourth down upcoming for the peg legs with four minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the opening frame. Wind's continuing to blow here. Standing right around the peg leg 40 yard line is Rashawn Donald. Along with Dan Dwab, good snap. High end over end kick is fluttering to the near side, but takes a good bounce right up to midfield. So we'll just have to see where they have officially marked this, but it went out right around midfield, so it should be relatively close to there, and they'll put it right at the midfield line. Second possession of the ball game, with four minutes remaining in the first quarter for the top seeded. Knights of Franklin K. Lane. No score. Inside handoff for Keith Rodriguez. And Rodriguez is up for a gain of two and then driven back. So back into peg leg territory go the Lane Knights in a fast paced and as far as time wise goes, fast moving opening quarter in this PSAL Cup Division Championship game. Again, we thank you as always for being with us. I'm Pete Bolroy, game day producer Tom Zweibel. Frank Locasio, the photographer for today's tilt. You can see all his photos on our website, of course, at msgvarsity.com. There'll be plenty of a beautiful day. I mean, football is a cold weather sport, quite honestly, and it's a gorgeous day. Windy and chilly. I mean, if the wind wasn't as bad as it is, it probably wouldn't be that cold, but you just got to dress warmer. Second down and eight. 3.05 to go, opening quarter. Rodriguez looking left, pumps. It's going to take it directly up the middle to the 45, spinning forward. It's going to be shy of the first down, but they push that pile. So this is going to be a lot closer than it initially looked. And we have seen Lane really physically control this game at the line of scrimmage. And that's the quarterback, Rafael Hidalgo, carrying the pile. We've already seen Daniel Dwa do that converting a fourth down where he dragged a bunch of defenders about five or six yards and Hildalgo, the marker is at the 40 yard line. This ball is very close. Two twenty-eight remaining in the opening quarter. Gonna come out for a measurement here so that'll stop the clock momentarily with 220 remaining in this first quarter it's very close we'll just have to see what the chains say so as you can see they'll come out from the far side with the chain gang the marker for the first down at the 40 yard line the ball's close and all it has to do is touch it for a first down this could be very close i'm trying to see from my angle it looks like the nose of the ball wow that close. It's going to set up third. And the nose of a football for the first down. And the way Lane has controlled the line of scrimmage with their power. Power back sets for most of the game. Running somewhat of a, a wild kind of offense, if you will, with a lot of speed backs. But they have the power with speed with guys like Rodriguez. Power and speed with a guy like... Daniel Dewan, of course, Rayshon Donald at times running the show. And he lines up now out of that Wildcat set, fakes the handoff for Dwa, keeps it himself, running with a head of steam. Lowered his shoulders across the 20, 10, 5, he's pushed out of bounds. Wow. We talk about control in the line of scrimmage. How about the point of attack? He had the first down and then just lowered his shoulders and bulldozed. One of the Stuyvesant defenders down the sideline. So there's the power followed by the speed, and that is just sick. Hard piece of running by the senior Donald. Found the end zone three times this season. He's totaled 540 yards on the ground. He's got a receiving touchdown, a couple of tackles defensively, two interceptions. Most of the kids that play high school football go both ways anyway, and he does it just as well as anyone. Direct snap goes from the inside handoff for precious Zach Pona. 
And the senior muscles his way forward to the two-yard line. Donald also has a 98-yard kick return touchdown this season as well. So another one of those do-it-all players for the Knights who have had two pretty good drives. They were stopped on their second of two fourth downs earlier in the quarter. And they're set up here inside the five-yard line of Stuyvesant. They've moved the ball effectively and relatively quickly as the first quarter is going to come to an end. Quarter number two right around the corner and Lane looking pretty good trying to get the first score of the game here in the 2012 PSAL Cup Division Championship. Start of the second quarter here in Queens, 2012 PSAL Cup Division Championship. Ball in the three-yard line. On second down inside handoff and De Jesus who was hit and dropped. Might have got a yard on the carry, so it'll set down, set up, I should say, a third goal. Lane looking to crack the scoreboard for the first time here today. Just 20 seconds into the second quarter, we are scoreless between number one Franklin K. Lane and number two Stuyvesant. Thanks for being with us on MSG Varsity, MSGVarsity.com. I'm Pete Mulroy, Times Y Bell, the game day producer. This sets up to be a fun one. These two teams play. I think we're going to have a timeout here by Lane. These teams played back week four of the regular season. Stuyvesant won the game by a 21 to 8 margin. So with 40 seconds passing in the second quarter, Coach Warren for the night takes a timeout. If you want to see photos of today's game, you can, of course, log on to our website at msgvarsity.com and click on the photo gallery. Frank Locasio doing a great job taking game day photos of this championship game so get all today's game day shots at msgvarsity.com mentioned the shots from today's game there's frank locasio joining us today in queens does a great job getting all the action shots down on the field crowd shots team shots coaches all the action today he will capture and put it on the website at msgvarsity.com big third down and goal on the way here for the knights Scoreless tie very early here in the second quarter. Ball came free again. Stuyvesant's already recovered one on fourth down. Back in the first quarter. All signs indicating that it will be peg leg football now. But wow. Initially looked like the peg legs had pounced on the football, but the referee puts the fist up and that indicates fourth down on the way. So good news for the Knights, but the ball's come free on them twice. Didn't, didn't recover the one back in the first quarter, but they get the one here. And the one back in the first quarter was fourth and 18. They would have been shy anyway, so it's almost like a punt, if you will. So fourth down here on the way. The ball is inside the five-yard line. They'll mark it at the three. Dow goes back under center. He's going to keep it himself. Turks who is right up the middle, waiting for the signal touchdown. And the Knights on the board for the first time here today. And they lead this championship contest in the Cup Division. Six zip. And that's the starting quarterback, Rafael Hidalgo. Shardy trotting to the near sideline after getting his squad on the board for the first time here today. Offensive units going to stay out on the field. Try to convert. The two-point conversion. Okay, make it an eight-nothing lead. Five wide receivers set with an empty backfield. Two left, three right. Hidalgo under center. Again, get to keep it this time. Comes to the left. And he's got the two. 10-21 remaining in the first half, and it's eight-nothing lane leading Stuyvesant. Hidalgo took it to three yards for the touchdown. Now he takes two yards for the two-point conversion. Eight-nothing is the score. And Hidalgo, who had really been quiet, this is a team that favors the run in the ninth, but he's a good game manager, and he's finally able to take it in for the first score of this championship game. There's 10-21 remaining in this first half. Two possessions for Lane. They own an eight nothing advantage went down the field 
fairly well in their opening possession of the game, which was the opening possession of the ball game. This is fielded by Biggs. And then he just lowers the boom and is taken down at the 34-yard line. So good field position here for the second time for the peg legs. You probably heard the pop. That was Blaine Patrick. Starting defensive lineman for this lane team. Makes a special teams tackle there. But Lane has really dominated the line of scrimmage as far as offense goes. Forced a three and out back in the first quarter. So Stuyvesant offense on the field. This time trailing by a score, 8 to nothing, with 10 minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Here's Mahmoudov rolling to his right. Look at a throw. Now he's just going to tuck it and run to the 40. Tiptoes his way to the 45, and he's taken out there. First down marker was at the 44. He got plus one. First down and 10, Stuyvesant from their own 45-yard line. So a good way to start that drive for the quarterback, Alan Mahmoudov. Quarterback, defensive back, over 1,100 yards passing this season, 13 touchdowns, five interceptions. He's got 120 yards total. Making 130 after that 10-yard game. And he's found the end zone six times with his legs. 19 total touchdowns for this very talented quarterback. Inside handoff to the 47-yard line. A good hard piece of running for Werner Zahani. 85 touches, 445 yards, two scores. He's got a receiving touchdown as well, does the senior back. He's wearing number 20 today. Funny story, when I was talking with Coach Strasser, he had a smirk on his face when he told me, usually wears number one, but he left his number one jersey in the supermarket. <laughs> Across midfield, this handoff, stiff arm to the 40, and taken out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Tough running. Physical football teams, that's Cooper Weaver that time on the inside give. Weaver, the sophomore, five touchdowns this season. He's a defensive ball hawk as well with 54 tackles. Fun piece of running there for the sophomore. Nine and a half to go. Here's Zahani one more time, up the middle, finding space. Inside the 30-yard line, he goes to the 27, but that was a, that had a good laugh earlier for the fact that Werner has to wear number 20 today. This coach spoke very highly of a very, very good player. As a timeout, taken down on the field, 9-18 remaining in the second quarter. Just over nine minutes remaining in the second quarter. It's an 8-0 ball game at number one lane, leading number two, Stuyvesant, but Stuyvesant's got a pretty good looking drive going here, as they'll have second down and less than one on the way. Pitch to the outside, they've got the first down, 25-20. Another hard physical run for this peg leg team. That time it was Jack Haggerty. The ball did come out, but Stuyvesant fortunate enough to fall on it. So they'll move the chains here, first down and 10. At the night's 17-yard line, Mudov inside handoff, now bouncing out to the near side, up to the 15-yard line, and spilling forward. And as Stuyvesant continues to move the ball here, doing a nice job on the ground. Eight minutes, 40 seconds remaining, first half. Three wide receivers go out to the left of Mahmoudov, one to the right. Low in the back center is Haggerty on second down and five. First down marker at the eight-yard line. Mahmoudov takes the snap, looks to his left, back to his right, throws, pass caught! Waiting for the signal as Biggs was down and they finally raised the hands. Touchdown! Nathaniel Biggs had to go low for it. It was a good tight spiral. Went low, bobbled it, and then was able to bring it back in. It's fairly good coverage on the play. He had a tough angle when the ball came to him. He was able to bobble it and bring it back into his chest while falling down to the ground. For the first touchdown of the game for the peg legs, PAT on the way. High snap, down, line drive, kick is through and good. With 8.05 remaining. In the first quarter, after the Nathaniel Biggs touchdown, it's 8-7, Stuyvesant trailing by one. That's the ninth touchdown of the season 
for the starting wide receiver, number 86, Nathaniel Biggs. Eight minutes, five seconds remaining in this first half, and it's a one-point ball game. Number one lane leading number two, Stuyvesant, by a score of eight to seven. Left to right kickoff will be fielded by the Knights at the 20-yard line. And across the 30 goes Keith Rodriguez, and he's driven back. They'll give him the forward progress. So it'll be first down and 10, moving right to left for the blue and white of Lane. They'll start this drive from their own 31-yard line, leading by a point. As we've seen success by the Knights moving the football, and they've really dominated from the point of attack in the line of scrimmage with a tough physical running game. And they lead by a point. The man in motion is Rodriguez. He takes the inside draw to the outside, sidesteps one defender, and is across the 35-yard line to the 37. Seven minutes, 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Second down and four on the way for the Knights. Again, 8-1 overall when you combine regular and postseason. 7-1 and one during the regular season in league play. Second meeting of the year between Lane and Stuyvesant. Stuyvesant won back week four, 21-8. And his pass is complete across the 40-45 and taken down shy of midfield. Hidalgo doesn't put it up much, but very successful play as he came to the outside for Rodriguez, who's taken down at his own 49-yard line. So first down and 10. He's again, Lane moving the chains. They, this is their third offensive possession of the ball game. They've had time-consuming drives as well, especially the opening drive of the game that was over five and a half minutes. Hidalgo, flush near side, just turns around and gets rid of it. So an intelligent play there for Hidalgo, realizing he was out of the pocket. Just came to the near side, nothing there, turned back around and just got rid of the football. So the incomplete pass doesn't go for a loss, did not take the crucial sack that would have gone for a big loss, was able to just chuck it away. Second down and 10 from their own 49 here with 6.45 remaining in the first half. Lane leading 8-7 to seven as they break the huddle. Come back with a three-back set. And the quarterback is the junior, Rafael Hidalgo. The handoff goes for Daniel Dwight, bouncing off one defender across midfield. Speed to the outside, has got the first down. Sidesteps another defender and leaps forward along that far sideline, stayed in bounds and got up to the 30-yard line. Great run of 21 yards for the senior. Another first down for the top-seeded Franklin K. Lane Knights. It's nice when they have a co-captain in Daniel Dua that's got power. He's got some great speed as well. Once he got to that second level, he was able to get another 15 yards after the initial contact was made. First down and 10, Stuyvesant and 30. Lane leads by a point here in the second quarter, 8-7. to seven. Keith Rodriguez set up on the wide receiver screen, gets some good blocking to the 25, and hit. It's going to be close to the 20-yard line. I think they'll put it at the 21-yard line, so it'll be... About a yard shy of the first down, but a good gain on first down again for Lane with 6.06 remaining. Clock stop as Rodriguez was hit and taken out along the near sideline. Six minutes remaining, as I just said, just over it. We'll recap everything for you with the first half highlights. A couple scores already to show you with Lane leading Stuyvesant 8-7. to seven. His second down and less than one on the way. They First down markers at the 20. They put this ball just inside the 21 as Hidalgo drops back. And just turns around and gives the ball to Dwab, who's got the first down, spins to stay, and gain a couple more yards. He's wrestled down shy of the 15-yard line. They should put this just inside the 17. First down and 10 again for the Knights. With, there are big gusts when they come. Certainly affected play down on the field in the passing attack, but we've seen for the most part both of these teams just keeping the ball on the ground because they have phenomenal running games, especially Lane. 
Two good quarterbacks, game managers in Hidalgo for Land and Makhudov for Stuyvesant. When they need to, they can put the ball in the air, but you can hear that wind coming through my microphone. It is a steady, constant breeze here. Breeze is probably an understatement. Inside give for Dewa. He's hit instantaneously. Might have lost the yard on the carry. Second down on the way. Second and nine. He got back to the line of scrimmage. Clock continuing to move here in the first half. And Wayne just content on taking their time. Get the play call in from the sideline. And head coach Inga Warren has it for his quarterback, Rafael Hidalgo, who's back on the field under five minutes to go. A couple of personnel changes made for the Knights. Again, this is their third offensive possession. They look, they've looked good on all three of them. The opening possession, they came up just a bit shy of points. Gave it to Stuyvesant after failing to convert a fourth down and long. Scored on their second drive. It was a Hidalgo touchdown from three yards, and he converted the two-point play. Rayshon Donald to the outside. Cuts back upfield, and a good piece of running again for Donald, still carrying the pile. And he was hit at first at the 10-yard line, bounced off a tackler, and then again it dragged the pile. Like I've said it a bunch of times already in this game, how physical Lane has been in this ball game, controlling that line of scrimmage. And it sounds like a broken record, but it is the absolute truth. The way they have controlled this football game right at the point of attack, and it was ever more evident than that run there by Rayshawn Donald. Took it just shy of the goal line. So here's Hidalgo and company set up one more time. The junior quarterback going to keep it himself. Second effort may have gotten there, waiting for the signal touchdown. Four minutes and ten seconds to go. It's the quarterback, Rafael Hidalgo, one more time for Lane. And they lead this ball game 14-7. Two-point play on the way. See that a lot in high school football. Teams don't have place kickers. Hard to come by in many instances. Stuyvesant does have one. Two-point opportunities lane in this ballgame. One for one. Hidalgo ran it in on the last touchdown from two yards out. See if they can do it one more time. Inside give and smack right at the line of scrimmage with Wesley Diaz. Hidalgo just turned around and handed it to him with the Stuyvesant defense all over it. So there's 4-10 remaining in the first half. One score ball game. Lane leading Stuyvesant 14-7. to And it was Hidalgo one more time. You see the second effort. He's able to get over the defensive line of the peg legs for the seven-point advantage. Ainsley Jones set to kick this one away for Lane. Back deep to receive for Stuyvesant. It is, of course, number 86, Nathaniel Biggs. Mentioned his name on both sides of the ball a bunch of times. This kick near sideline out of bounds. That'll draw a flag. So better field position here for Stuyvesant as the kickoff goes out of bounds. Not rather than the field position. Stuyvesant has that kickoff went out of bounds. Chose to have Lane re-kick. So they'll kick this time from the 35-yard line. And Jones is kicking directly into the win. He's not going to kick this one off this time. It'll be Blaine Patrick. And Patrick's is skirting to the outside, takes a bounce, the 25. And that was a very dangerous play on that far sideline. You saw the first kickoff come out of bounds along the near sideline. Stuyvesant just letting it bounce around, hoping it would go out along the far sideline. But quickly, the Knights came down the field. And they pick up that ball. It's their possession. We're just awaiting the signal. And I believe it's peg leg football. And it will be. Left to right, Stuyvesant will go. But very, very, very dangerous play for the peg legs. That thing took a bounce to 30. It was fluttering its way towards that far sideline, looking like it may go up. But then it made a U-turn and came back towards the field of play. And Lane was down there. Stuyvesant very fortunate to have the football. And even four minutes remaining on the clock here in the first half. One score ball game, 14-7, number one lane, leading number two. Stuyvesant, again, we thank you for being with us for this PSAL Cup Division Championship on MSG Varsity and MSGVarsity.com. I'm Pete Mulroy, my producer, 
Tom Zweibel will recap the first two quarters of play in our MSG Varsity Halftime Show in a couple of minutes. Direct inside handoff up to the 30-yard line. On a nice run by Jack Haggerty. And the senior gets a good gain of seven on the play. Second down and three on the way. The clock continues to move here. Still plenty of time for the Stuyvesant offense that have favored the run here in this ball game. But when they need to, they can put it up in the air. Mudov to give for Haggerty one more time, and he's taken down. Far side was able to get back to the 30-yard line. No gain on the play. It'll be third down and three. Ball spotted just shy of the 31-yard line, so they'll call a third and a long two with under three minutes remaining in the first half. Here's Haggerty one more time. He's tripped up He's close to the marker. I believe they'll give him the first down, so they'll move the chains for the peg legs. 2.48 remaining in the first half. Clock will stop for the movement of the chains, but the whistles quickly come back in, so play resumes. Clock continue to move. Mahmoudov puts this one up. It was knocked down. A dangerous throw. He was going for bigs. And it was Corey Nicholas, co-captain for this lane team that stuck his hand up there and knocked it down. Nicholas nearly came away with an interception. He picks that one off. He's looking at six. There was no one in front of him. So second and ten. Just shy of the 35-yard line for number two Stuyvesant. They trail by a score, 14-7. Mahmoudov back. They set up the screen here for Haggard. He's got it, 40, 45, 50. Room in front of him, tripped up at the last second as he's up to the 40-yard line of Lane. And Rashawn Donald was there to trip him up. Otherwise, Haggerty had a shot to break that one for a touchdown. But that was set up beautifully by Mahmoudov. He had Haggerty drop back and throw, set up the screen. And Haggerty took it to the 40-yard line of the Knights. 14-7, dangerous snap. Mahmoudov picks it up, rolling to his right, throws one up, incomplete. Again, going for Biggs on a busted play. Was able to roll out, get rid of it. Knocking it down, it was Rayshon Donald who saved the touchdown perhaps on the last play. And he nearly came away with an interception. So the incomplete pass will stop the clock with a buck 45 remaining in the first half. Second down and 10 on the way from the 45 yard, 40 yard line, I should say. You gotta fix the chains on the far side. It should be second down. And they'll do that. Mahmoudo back in the shotgun. He's got three to his right, one to his left, and a lone back set. That's Haggerty setting up the block. Pass across the middle, bind it up in the air, and falls incomplete. And the secondary of Lanes come away with a couple nice plays. It was Donald once again, coupled with Gerard Phillip, safety in corners that start for this night team. They move the ball back. You see there was a flag at the beginning of that play. They move it back. It was a holding penalty against Lane. Minute 38 to go. The penalty that was against Stuyvesant, I should say, will back them up. Back inside their own territory. As Mahmoudov pumps for Biggs, now goes for Biggs, and he dropped it incomplete. So Stuyvesant was moving along nicely. The big penalty puts him back on their half of the field offensively. Third down and long on the way. Third, about 22. 14-7 score, minute 24. Remaining in this first half, Lane leading Stuyvesant again. We'll recap all the first half highlights for you as part of our MSG Varsity Halftime Show that comes up at the end 
of this half. Across the middle, pass complete. And trying to push the pile forward for the first down it was Gabriel Hurwitz. Makhmudov read him the whole way. He was wide open along the near side hash. And they place this at the 30-yard line. That should be enough for the first down. The chain gang looking like they want to move it. Haven't seen an official signal pointing for the first down yet. They may come out and measure this. So they'll stop the clock to talk it over. There's 61 seconds remaining in this first half. And now they'll point and signal to the right. First down for Stuyvesant. So they keep it alive, converting a third and 23. Combination of Mahmoudov to Hurwitz. He's a senior wide receiver. Over 400 yards this year, four touchdowns for the senior Hurwitz. First down at 10 for Stuyvesant from the lane 30-yard line. Mahmoudov rolling out to his left, pumps on the throw. And it's going to rush for a gain of four on the play. Clock continues to move here, 52 seconds of 51. I believe Stuyvesant took a timeout, stopped the clock with 51 seconds remaining in the second quarter. 51 seconds remaining, Stuyvesant timeout over. They trail by a score, 14-7. It's going to be second down and six as they're just shy of the lane, a 25-yard line. Mahmoudov takes the snap, looks to his left, comes back to his right. And that pass will fall incomplete. It was intended once again for Haggerty. But the lane defense surrounding Haggerty, as soon as Mahmoudov dropped back to throw that ball, they knew exactly where it was going. It falls incomplete. So third down on the way here for the peg leg offense. Mahmoudov sets up shotgun once again. Thanks for Haggerty. Throws to his left, and it falls incomplete. We're going for the first down, which was right at the 20-yard line. And it was intended for Cooper Weaver, but it drops incomplete. So fourth down and six on the way. Peg leg offense remains on the field. See with the offense here for Stuyvesant, trailing by a touchdown. Final seconds of the first half on fourth down. Makhmudov going to put it up, incomplete. He had bigs down there. That pass was intended, however, for the senior. Hurwitz drops incomplete, 17 seconds remaining. First half, the lane offense with a one touchdown lead will take the field. And start from their own 26 yard line. Have a look at the head coach, Shingo Warren, for Lane. He's in his fourth seasons. Top seed in the cup division in this championship game. Coached this team to an 8-1 overall record to this point, looking to knock off Stuyvesant, a team that beat him back in week four. Second meeting of the year, of course, this being obviously the bigger of the two. We'll have a champion at the end of this one in the cup division. 17 seconds remaining. Defense back on the field. Here it comes near side for Rodriguez. Flags come down. That'll probably be a hold against the Knights. Rodriguez will finally skirt out at the 37-yard line. Just waiting for the official signal on the flag. It was an illegal shift on lane. Six seconds showing on the clock. We'll see what Lane elects to do here after the penalty. Probably just put a knee on it. They do have a one touchdown lead, 14-7. Two scores in this first half by their junior quarterback, Rafael Hidalgo. Three rushing touchdowns to this point. Now he's got five after the two today. Eight, nine passing touchdowns to eight interceptions for the juniors. And a fine season for the top seed in this cup division, the Lane Knights. Five-yard penalty will push him back to the 21-yard line. As again, there's just six seconds remaining in this first half. And the 
And off. Comes inside for Dewar. Taking it to the outside. Turns the corner. 45. And he's finally pushed down at midfield. And that'll be the final play run here in the first half. Into the locker room. The top seeded Knights of Franklin K Lane take a 14 7 lead over number two Stuyvesant. We're going to recap it momentarily in our MSG Varsity. Halftime show, then quarter number three resumes. This sets up to be a fun second half, so stay tuned on MSG Varsity and MSGVarsity.com. 14-7 at the break. Lane leading Stuyvesant. Lane the top seed. Stuyvesant number two. Three scores to go over with your first two coming. Actually, two out of the three, I should say, for the quarterback for Lane Richard. Adago, two rushing touchdowns, able to convert a two-point conversion in that. It was an 8-7 game on a pitch and catch to Nathaniel Biggs for Stuyvesant. Biggs had to go down low to get that meet the bobbling catch to reel it in. Moments later, that second of two touchdowns for Hidalgo and Lane stretching out to a 14-7 ball game. That's where we are with 24 minutes in the books. This has been the MSG Varsity Halftime Show. A couple of scores we went over with you. Third quarter, right around the corner. You're going to want to stay tuned to this one. It sets up to be a fun second half. Just about ready for the start of the second half. And as we resume play here in the third quarter, fresh 12 minutes on the scoreboard, number one lane ahead of number two, Stuyvesant, by a score of 14-7. to seven. It was a fun first half, two rushing touchdowns for night quarterback Rafael Hidalgo. And a pitch and catch between quarterback Alan Mahmoudov and a diving catch was made by Nathaniel Biggs for the only peg leg touchdown. So that's how we arrive at the 14-7 score. Opening kickoff of the second half will be taken by the peg legs of Stuyvesant. They'll work right to left. They have the dominant white on with blue hats and some red trimming. Blue and white also for Lane. And this one takes a bounce and is recovered by the Knights. On the opening kickoff of the second half, the offense for Lane is gonna take the field. Initially, we're kicking this ball off to Stuyvesant who would have moved right to left and that didn't seem to be intentional. It was booted away by Blaine Patrick who along with Ainsley Jones does some of the place kicking for this night team but directly through that wind it took a bounce and it was immediately scooped up by Knights. They've come close a couple of times in instances like that and this one they recover. 11.53 on the scoreboard. Now seven seconds in to this second half. And a big play takes place in favor of number one lane. It's funny, it was a sideways kick. Came off the side of the foot of Patrick and just took a big bounce. And the Knights came away with the football. The opening kickoff for the half was supposed to be taken by the peg legs, but in turn, Lane comes up with the recovery. And they'll run near side for Dan Dubois, who had 61 rushing yards in the first half. He's over 100 now. Touchdown, Knights. They lead it 20 to 7. 17 seconds in to the second half. Top seed Lane has increased their lead, and it's Daniel Dubois, the senior co-captain, Finding the end zone. Right across midfield, and Dwa's over 100 yards. Big following for both fan bases here, but this Stuyvesant crowd is stunned. Two-point conversion on the way for Dalgo. Trying to make this a 15-point advantage for his team. This comes near side. It's Dwa trying to cap off the drive, pushing forward, and he gets across the line for the two-point conversion. 17 seconds have gone by in the third quarter, and Lane has another touchdown. They lead it 22 to seven. So Lane Patrick to kick away again. So what happened last time resulting in a Lane touchdown, this one He's going to skirt out along the near sideline, so again, flags will come in. 
It's either going to be a re-kick or a better field position for the peg legs. Last time the ball went out, they elected to have it re-kicked. We'll see what they do here. 11.43 remaining in the third quarter. 22-7 the lead for Lane. Quick touchdown for Daniel Dwyer here in the second half after they recovered the opening kickoff of the second half. So Stuyvesant will elect to have them all moved up to the 35-yard line. That's where they'll start this drive. Trentland by two scores. Quarterback Allen Mahmoudov back on the field for the peg leg. 7-2 overall. Lane 8-1. They're the top two seeds in the cup division. And they're playing to a two-score ball game here in the title game. And off bouncing to the outside. And falling forward to the 37-yard line is Cooper Weaver. There's a late flag on the play. Flag comes in at the end of it. face mask call against Lane. The penalty is a 15-yard face mask against Franco Free K. Lane. Free 15 yards. That brings the ball into nice territory. For Stuyvesant. Ball is placed on the 48-yard line of Lane. First and 10, Stuyvesant. Eleven twenty-six to go. This one now at the 48-yard line of Lane. Directly up the middle goes Zahani, senior, running back for the peg legs. Now Stuyvesant tries to put one in the end zone. One touchdown in the first half, but a very quick touchdown for Lane to start this third quarter, and they're up by 15. Stuyvesant trying to answer. One minute passed already in the third quarter, and plenty of actions taking place. Zahani has it to the 40-yard line. First down, Marker's at the 39-yard line. He's close. It's going to bring up third down and short. Third down and one on the way for the peg legs. Third and one for Stuyvesant. Again, we thank you for being with us today on MSG Varsity and MSGVarsity.com. Hope you're enjoying this Cup Division Championship game of the PSAL. I'm Pete Mulroy. Game day producer is Tom Zweibel. Third down and one. And uh, Makbudov was standing back there with the shotgun set. And got that entire defensive line and the second level linebacking core for Lane to jump across the line. Needed a yard, they'll get five on the penalty. First down for Stuyvesant. Stuyvesant, first down. Akmudov sends a man in motion. That's Cooper Weaver going from left to right. Quick sling out for Biggs. So the big man's got it to the 20 and inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Scored a touchdown earlier in the first quarter. Outside of that has been relatively quiet. He's been held in check for the most part on the outside. Did make a nice diving catch that he bobbled and had to bring back into his chest. That the only score of the game for Stuyvesant, but they're moving the football here on their first possession of the second half. Inside handoff for a gain of one on the play. Second down and nine on the way for the Peg Lakes with two minutes and ten seconds passed here in the John third quarter. Haggerty carries the ball. Gain of one down to the 18-yard line. Second and nine. The two wide receivers set as now Weaver drops into the backfield. They fake the handoff for him. Go play action up in the corner of the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. It's Biggs once again. A huge answer for Stuyvesant. That's just what they needed after the quick score to start the quarter for Lane. It's 22-13. The peg legs on the board here in the second half. At the four-yard line. PAT on the way for Gabriel Hurwitz. Snap is down, kick on the way, it was tipped. And batted down, so the PAT no good. 22 to 13, and that's significant because it'll stay a two-score game.
906 to go as Stuyvesant's going to kick this one away to Lane. He's fielded at the 20 yard line. And taking it to the near side now, reversing his field. Trying to find some downfield blockers. Good piece of running for Rayshon Donald. Did a lot of running to get up to the 40 yard line, but great field position here for Lane. They lead 22 to 13, scored in only 17 seconds to start this third quarter. Recovering the opening kickoff that I don't think was an intentional onside kick. Just a good break to the ball. Lane got their gunners down quickly to take the bouncing ball. Then Daniel Dwa found the end zone on a big rushing touchdown to make it 22-7. Stuyvesant came right back and answered the connection once again. Mahmudov to Biggs, the second touchdown. Reception for Nathaniel Biggs gives him 10 on the season. 8.53 to go, third quarter, 22-13 the score. Lane the lead and the football. Nowhere to go for Hidalgo, tucks it. He's got a gain on the play. They'll give him the forward progress up to the 42-yard line. Second and nine on the way. Three yard line. Gain of two. Retro gain of three. Second and seven. Second down at seven. They give the three on the last game. And Lane did such a nice job in the first half controlling line of scrimmage. They've done that the same way here for Dan Dwa once again across the 40, 30. And Daniel Dwa for the second time. And this third quarter finds the end zone for Lane, the running game, and the offensive line working wonders for the top seeded Knights. It's 28-13, another big rushing touchdown for Dan Dwa. Once he got past the line of scrimmage, he was gone. 7.53 to go, offense on the field again. We've seen that for every touchdown here for Lane, they go for two, don't have a place kicker. 28-13 is score. A successful two-point with an empty backfield here for Adago, who kept one and looking to keep this one himself. Has to come back to the near side, nearly lost the football, but he's wrestled down, so 28-13, and a big stop there. Now 15-point game, it'll stay a two-score game. So Lane to boot this one away. To Stuyvesant end over and kick, fielded by Biggs at the 22, across the 30. Is hit and is able to get another five yards out of it. It'll be up to the 36-yard line. So Stuyvesant will start this at their own 36, trailing 28-13 with 7.47 remaining in the third quarter. First and 10 inside handoff for Haggerty across the 40, taken down at the 44, good chunk of running. John Haggerty. On the gain of nine, it'll be second and one on the way. Still only a two score ball game, but two very quick scores for Lane. It's gotta be a little concerning for Stuyvesant the way, two Big gainers for Daniel Dwar found the end zone 17 seconds into the quarter. And on the next possession, two plays later. This pass complete on the outside for Gabriel Hurwitz. Fred Stuyvesant, on their two possessions, this being the second of the second half, has moved the ball nicely, already found the end zone once. And they trail by 15, 28 to 13. That's good enough for Stuyvesant, first down. Back in lane territory at the 47-yard line, first and 10, right to left they work. Inside handoff across the 40, now to the 36-yard line is the sophomore Cooper Weaver. Cooper Weaver advances the ball to the lane 36-yard line, good enough for another peg leg, first down. Now moving the chains nicely here, Stuyvesant, they gotta get some stops defensively. Still plenty of time left in this one, seven minutes. Even remaining in the third quarter. Timeout's going to be taken by Lane. They'll stop the clock with an even seven minutes remaining in the third. First down and 10 after the late timeout. Mahmoudov has this pass complete inside the 25 yard line. Kyler Chase has the completed pass for a Stuyvesant first down, they've looked real good on this drive. Ball is brought down to the 23 yard line, first and 10, Hagelag. First catch of the ball game for Kyler Chase. 
sophomore wideout. Six and a half to go third quarter. Here it goes for Haggerty, trying to bounce it to the outside and gets up to the 20-yard line. Gain of three on the play, second down and seven upcoming. And the wind continues to blow here. This game, of course, is going to be followed by the 2012 PSAO Bowl Division Championship. The Grady Falcon team has already arrived. They're going to use the baseball field on the far side to do some warm-ups. They'll take on number two South Shore. Grady is the top seed in the Bowl Division this year. Mahmoudov gets rid of it incomplete. On second down and seven. So uh, we'll bring up a third down for the peg legs. Again, trailing 28 to 13 with six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Third down, Stuyvesant on the lane, 20-yard line. So Mahmoudov and company back for the third down play, two back set. Wide receivers, two split out right, one to the left. Flag will come in. See if this will go offense, defense. That's going to be a false start against Stuyvesant, so that's going to make the third and seven, a third and 12. Back him up five yards. Third and 12. Nathaniel Biggs comes back onto the field for this play. Biggest target on the field offensively for Stuyvesant. This ball may be going his way. He's on the far side, defense by Rafael Hidalgo, so we'll see. He's got a significant height advantage. We'll see where this football goes on third 12 with 5.45 remaining in the third quarter. Mahmoudov shotgun looks to his left, back across the middle, pass complete to the 20-yard line. And he's got Gabriel Hurwitz one more time. Short of the first down mark, it's going to set up fourth and about six. Offense stays down the field here. Let's see if Stuyvesant can pick up the necessary yardage to move the chains. Fourth down and six yards to go. The first down marker is at the 14-yard line. This one, middle of the field at the 20. Right to left goes Stuyvesant on fourth down. Pass to the right, complete. And the second effort has the first down for Stuyvesant, and it's the sophomore Cooper Weaver one more time. He was hit, and had he been taken down on the initial point of contact, he would have been short of the first down, but again, second effort getting it done. We've seen both teams have success with second effort plays, and that time it works in favor of the peg legs. They'll move the chains on a crucial fourth down. Four minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the third, and they trail by two scores, 28 to 13. Mahmoud off play action, comes near side, pass complete. And a good gainer to the eight-yard line. Leonid Mamut, the senior wide out. He's got a touchdown this season on 16 catches, making it 17 on the year. Move the chains again for Stuyvesant. They'll have to get it to the three-yard line. Second down and five on the way. Inside handoff, it goes for Cooper Weaver, and he finds his way to the end zone. Two for two this half offensively for Stuyvesant. It's 28-19. The ever-important PAT on the way. They've had one blocked this half. The PAT now will make it a one-score ball game if they can convert. Cooper Weaver. A nice job to get into the end zone. Good blocking up front to pay up the way. This PAT is up. And good, 358 remaining in the third quarter, 28-20, number one lane, leading number two, Stuyvesant. Stuyvesant set to boot this one away to Lane. It's a one-score ball game again, and Lane will get the football back, and they've had two quick touchdowns when they've gotten the football here in the third quarter. To the 25, backtracking, trying to find some space. Not too much doing. The Stuyvesant special teams unit all over Keith Rodriguez. Had some room initially. It'll be first and 10 from their own 21-yard line for the 
Top seed, Lane Knights. It's been a fun ball game. Thanks for being with us on MSG Varsity and MSGVarsity.com. Pete Bolroy, Tom Zoy Bell, fighting the cold and the wind. This 2012 PSAL Cup Division Championship football is supposed to be played in cold weather, and there's not anywhere else I'd rather be this Sunday afternoon than broadcasting this game with my buddy Tom Zoy Bell. This pass incomplete, there's a dangerous one as that late flag will come in. But Doggo's lucky that one was only batted down and incomplete. Second and ten, lane. Just have to wait and see what the flag is. Haven't seen a signal yet. And they're going to get pass interference against Stuyvesant. That's a break for Lane. That'll move the ball. Up to the 42, excuse me, not the 42-yard line. What am I saying? The 37-yard line. 15-yard penalty from the 22 to the 37. First down and 10 for Lane. They've done it on the ground this half. Two Daniel Dwight touchdowns. Pass out far side. It's complete. 45-yard line. Trying to get up to midfield. But another first down for Lane. It's Dimeen Hammond. And the senior Hammond. Be quiet this ball game. Number five down on the field for the top seeded Knights. He is a senior, can play on the outside. He plays in the backfield. He's got 363 rush yards, 300 receiving yards. He just went over 300 for the year with that catch. Eight total touchdowns. And this is such a lane, uh, a dynamic lane offense, I should say, that when a young man like that has been held in check and you still put 28 points on the board, you're doing something right offensively. Hammond, 20 tackles and two picks defensively as well. Direct snap for Donald, has it across midfield, 45-40. On his feet to the 35 and wrestled down to the 33-yard line. And Rayshaw Donald, we've seen his speed from the start of this game till right now. He's been all over the place. Had a couple That's good enough for another Franklin K. Lane. defense Great passes down. in this game as well as he's the starting safety for this night team. Stuyvesant has answered both lane touchdowns in this half and really hasn't phased the Knights when they've had to take the field after a Stuyvesant touchdown as we're going to get a timeout down on the field taken by lane. They've answered the bell time and time again. They're putting together another good drive here. 2.33 remaining in the third. After the lane timeout, they have the football working left to right. As Donald's going to keep this one again. Up to the 31-yard line. Second and eight on the way. Four lane. They lead it 28 to 20 with two minutes remaining in the third quarter. It was a 14-7 ball game at half. Both teams found the end zone twice in this third quarter with still a buck 50 to go before the final 12 minutes approach here comes the jesus in motion and he's going to take the handoff and throw incomplete his intended receiver gerard phillip he just fell incomplete for the starting wide out and he had a beat on the defense and the pass just came up a bit shy One minute, 36 remaining in the third quarter. Third down and eight on the way for the Knights. Hidalgo has it. Hands for Dwaz, got running room on the outside, across the 20, 10, 5, and he's in the end zone for a third time here in this game. All three touchdowns coming in this quarter. It is 34 to 20. Lane strikes again with the senior, Daniel Dwa. <laughs> so 
So another two-point opportunity on the way here for Lane. It's again the Stuyvesant crowd has gone completely silent, stunned by the play of Daniel Dwa, trying to cap it off with another two-point conversion, and he does so. A minute 21 to go in the third quarter. Lane leading number two Stuyvesant, 36 to 20. Lane to kick off again to Stuyvesant, end over and end kick. Taken by Biggs at the 27, across the 35, now 40, moving the pile up to the 43-yard line. So it would be good field position here for Stuyvesant. With a minute 14 remaining in the third quarter, it's back to a two-score lead for Lane, 36 to 20. But every time, it's been three times Lane has scored in this third quarter. The first two times Stuyvesant has come back and answered with touchdowns of their own. We'll see if they can do it again here. The minute 14 remaining in the third quarter, still a whole 12 minutes of football remaining in the fourth and final quarter that will determine a champion in the 2012 PSAL Cup Division. Ball on the ground, picked up. Who else? Daniel Dua recovers the fumble and takes it into the end zone. Another touchdown for Lane, and Daniel Dua has been an absolute nightmare for Stuyvesant. Tough exchange after the snap. Ball hit the ground and Dwah, two bounces, picked it up and ran it back for six more. It's his fourth touchdown of the third quarter. 42 to 20. Lane leading. Three rushing touchdowns this third quarter for the senior Daniel Dwah. That's his third defensive touchdown of the season. And this one goes directly for Rayshon Donald. And he's not going to make it. So 51 seconds remaining in the third. 42 to 20 lane leading Stuyvesant. <laughs> 51 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Once again, Blaine Patrick is going to kick this one away for the Lane Knights. They lead by 22, 42 to 20. This is a good kick. Takes it bounce to 10, and it'll dribble its way into the end zone. No return opportunity that time for the senior bigs. And with 44 seconds remaining in the third quarter, the peg leg offense will come back onto the field, trailing by three scores. <laughs> 44 seconds to go. Mudov and company back on the field for Stuyvesant. This pass completed on the outside for Biggs. He's up to the 25-yard line. Gain of five on first down, second and five on the way. First down marker, of course, at the 30-yard line. 35 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And here's the give inside. Agerty trying to bounce it to the outside, and he spins forward. Along the near hand, she's got the first down up to the 31-yard line, so that'll momentarily stop the clock with 18 seconds remaining in the third. First to 10 here, and back-to-back -to -back good gains for Stuyvesant. Again, trailing by three scores. Makmuda dropping back to pass, puts this one across the middle. And a diving catch is made at midfield. Had to go down low, did Gabriel Hurwitz, but he was able to get his hands underneath the football before it hit the turf, and they ruled it a completed pass. It was a good throw, a little low. Right at midfield. It'll be first to 10 for Stuyvesant when we start the final quarter. 12 minutes separating Lane from a title. They lead it by a score of 42 to 20. 36 minutes in the books here on MSG Varsity and MSGVarsity.com. Fourth quarter underway. Inside give for Cooper Weaver. He's across midfield. Is this the fourth quarter? Stuyvesant will go left to right. Twenty seconds into the final frame, score 42 to 20. Number one lane leading number two Stuyvesant. Whistles come down on the field here. A 
didn't see a flag, but they're going to stop play. False start is called against Stuyves uh, Stuyvesant. So that'll back him up to the 47-yard line. 30 seconds into this final quarter. Stuyvesant working left to right. Dominant white, blue hats, and the blue and white for Lane. The blue jerseys with the white numbers and letters. This one tipped and incomplete. I mean, Hammond had an opportunity there for his third interception this year. He's got two coming in along with 20 tackles. Just tipped at the line of scrimmage and couldn't get underneath it in time. So pass falls incomplete. It'll stop the clock momentarily for Stuyvesant. 11-18 to go in the fourth quarter. They trail by three scores. They've been able to answer all the scores this half for Lane. It's been the Daniel Bois show for the Knights. Four touchdowns in that third quarter, three rushing touchdowns and a defensive touchdown as well. This pass is complete back into lane territory, well short of the first down mark. It's going to set up fourth and about eight. I'll call it fourth and nine here from the 49-yard line. Got to get to the 40 to move the chains. Clock moves here with 10.50 remaining. They'll actually spot this ball. They move it from the 49 to the 47 at the end of that play. So fourth down and eight. Mahmoud rolling to his left, now throws, and he had Weaver. And the sophomore just let it fall incomplete. Was turning for the end zone as the ball was in his hands, lost sight of it, and it drops incomplete. So the turnover on down gives the ball back to the lane Knights. Phenomenal field position for a team that has already dominated on the ground. 42 points on the board. They lead by three scores with ten and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. First and ten, right to left, go the Knights leading by three scores. And swallowed up and dropped in the backfield. A big loss on the play as Lane was trying to stretch it to the outside. It's going to set up second down and 15 after the five-yard loss from their own 42-yard line. Lane just content on letting as much time come off the clock as they can between plays. Under nine and a half remaining. As they're up three scores, you can afford to do that. Dago turns around, handoff goes up the middle. Stuyvesant's defense back-to-back -back plays all over the running game. Third down and 14 on the way for the Eaton One Knights in control of this ball game. Explosive third quarter where they scored four touchdowns, three offensively, one defensively, all of them from the senior co-captain Daniel Dwight. Trying to take this handoff to the outside as Dwa stiff arms his way. And still moving along that sideline, trying to get out of a couple tackles. Keeps his feet moving. Well short of the first down, but good hard piece of running here for the senior. It's going to be fourth down and long. Eight minutes to go here in the fourth quarter of this 2012 PSAL Cup Division Championship. The Bowl Division Championship follows this one. Number one, Grady taking on number two, South Shore. South Shore, a team that played in the Cup Division last year. They fell in the championship game to McKee, Staten Island Tech. They'll be back to try to win a Bowl Division Championship. And the penalties you see down on the field stops the clock with 7.49. Full start called against the Knights. They're set to boot this one away. But an absolute gorgeous day for football. Chill in the air, windy, as this one is nearly blocked. It takes a big bounce at the 40 and then trickles inside the 30-yard line. So it takes a nice bounce for Lane. And Stuyvesant will start this drive at their own 29-yard line. 
First down and 10 for the peck legs. Mahmoudov looking to put this one up. Does, and it's intercepted. Biggs broke down the sideline. He was the intended receiver. And it's Rafael Hidalgo. Two touchdowns rushing for the starting quarterback for Lane. He's also the starting cornerback, and he comes up with an interception. Seven minutes to go, and the Lane offense is going to take the field again after their quarterback slash cornerback comes up with the turnover. A lot of playmakers on this lane team, and the junior Hidalgo is going to be back next year. He's certainly one of them. Forty-two twenty, the score with under seven to go. A couple of personnel changes made here late in this game for the Knights. Mudike Prince comes onto the field. Starting outside linebacker comes here and plays along the line. Set up as tight end. And there's a direct snap taken up the middle across and pushing the pile inside the 35 yard line. Jamie Hernandez, the senior co captain, number 63, move that pile. Across the 40 and inside the 35-yard line to the 33. Took the direct snap, and he's a starter along the offensive line, the defensive line, but they line him up as an offensive playmaker there. Took the direct snap and made a nice gain out of it. Set up in similar formation here, a two-back set. This is a high snap that Hernandez takes once again. First down markers at the 31. I believe he's going to be just shy, and it looks like they're going to put this at the 32. 5.48 remaining. Again, the Bowl Division Championship game follows this. Grady warming up. South Shore is dressed and ready to go there in the far corner. Fun day for football here in Springfield Gardens High School in Queens. And a doubleheader Sunday for us here at MSG Varsity. It's been a blast. And still a whole other ball game following this one. And that should be a good one as well. 42-20 to score, just over five minutes remaining. Lane, the top seed in the cup, leading number two Stuyvesant, and they have the ball. Up 22, just trying to kill as much time as possible. That third down play. They needed a yard for the first down, and one of the officials is standing right where the first down marker would be, and they're going to signal first down with under five minutes remaining. Jamie Hernandez, again, is a co-captain. He's done all the work on this drive, keeping it on the ground, just trying to kill as much clock as possible. Four and a half to go. And again, we'll have post-game interviews down on the field for our MSG Varsity post-game show with the player of the game. Is set up to the outside, tipped at the line, and then the pass complete. All the breaks have gone in favor of the Knights. Running out along that far sideline was Emmanuel Nunez. You saw it just tipped at the line. And Nunez was able to play it off the bounce right into his hands. Timeout taken down on the field. Stops the clock with 4.08. to go. Hidalgo back on the field. Turns around and hands this one off directly up the middle on second down. Not too much running room for Precious Akpona, the senior. The timeout taken by Stuyvesant. Stops the clock with four minutes remaining. And even four minutes remaining. I mean, Hammond goes in motion. Hidalgo looking to throw. Has it across the middle for Hammond. He's got the first down, needed the 21, and he got the 20. That'll move the chains for Lane.
three and a half to go. First down and 10 from the 20 yard line of Stuyvesant for number one Franklin K. Lane on their way to their ninth win of the season. The ninth win would give them the 2012 Cup Division Championship. Hammond goes in motion one more time. Ball on the ground. But a doggo fell on it. Flags come in. This might be a false start here against the Lane offense. And indeed it is. False start against Lane. That brings the ball back to the 25 yard line. First and 15 for the Knights. Three fourteen remaining. First down at 15, Hammond. Motion from near to far. Another flag will come in. And we'll have another false start against the night offense. False start, Franklin K. Lane. Five yard penalty will bring the ball back to the 30 yard line. Makes it first to 20 now. In the 30 yard line, got to get to the 10 again to move the chains, but there's three minutes and nine seconds remaining. We have a, another set of flags that come down. We'll just see what this penalty is this time. Back-to-back -back false starts called against Lane. There's a sideline warning. And this is just a sideline warning called against Stuyvesant. Sideline warning against Stuyvesant. The first infraction is a verbal warning followed by a 5-yard penalty. 3.03 remaining. It'll be first down and 20 for the night offense when we resume play here. Night offense back to the line. Hidalgo still on the field at quarterback. Looks left now, throws. Tipped around and intercepted. And the Stavis in defense comes up with a big play. It's Gabriel Hurwitz. Ball was tipped, knocked up. Hurwitz was able to get down and corral it before it hit the turf. 2.45 remaining. The peg leg offense back onto the football field. Down three scores, 42 to 20. First to 10 from their own 10 yard line for Stuyvesant. More flags come in. It's against the lane defense. With 2.43 remaining in the fourth quarter. So a free five yards for the big leg offense. It'll bring it out to the 15-yard line. Mahmoudov back to throw, sets up the screen, has it complete across the 20, and up to the 25-yard line. Goes Leon and Mamut. First down will stop the clock temporarily. Whistles come in, resume play. The chains move. First down and 10 for Stuyvesant. What up, looking to throw. Puts it up across the middle. Tipped and incomplete. Biggs one of the targets, but I believe that pass was intended for Gabriel Hurwitz. Stuyvesant knocked off Lane back in week four, 21 to eight, but Lane Played a great ball game here today in the championship. They lead 42 to 20 with two minutes and 18 seconds remaining. Mahmoudov looking to throw again across the middle. And this one falls incomplete. Third down and 10 from the 25 yard line. Forrest Iverson. 
Mahmoud out breaking the huddle, goes back into the shotgun. Three wide receivers to his right, one to his left. Screen set up for Biggs, has it across the 35. And the ball came loose. But I believe Stuyvesant's gonna maintain possession. Biggs got across the 34, and the ball will push it back to the 33-yard line. First down markers at the 35. So fourth down and two on the way with a buck 45 remaining in this game. Mahmoudov again out of the shotgun. Three right, one left. He'll keep it himself. Up the middle he goes to the 40, and he's tripped up as he falls forward to the 42-yard line for the first down. Mudov looks left, pumps left. Now he's going to put this up along the sideline. That one is not down. Good defensive play by Gerard Phillip. He's had a nice ball game. Defensively, the secondary of Lane has knocked a couple of passes down. They've come away with an interception and a fumble return for touchdown by Daniel Dwight. One minute, 13 seconds to go. Second down. And 10 on the way for Stuyvesant from their own 43-yard line. Fake for Haggerty. This pass left is incomplete. A high toss. He fell off the hands of Mamou. One oh five to go now. And again, we'll have post game coverage as part of our MSG Varsity post game show and on the field interview with the MSG Varsity player of the game. This is Haggerty to the forty five, gets across midfield and takes it along the far, far sideline up to the lane forty five. Stayed in bounds. Clock will continue to move here. So referee signal to keep the clock running with forty five seconds to go. Fourth season for Angel Warren, the head coach of the Lane Knights, as this pass is put up incomplete, intended for Biggs once again. And he's going to come away with a championship in his fourth season. It's the 2012 PSAL Cup Division title game between number one Lane and number two Stuyvesant. And it was close, 14 7 at the half, three touchdowns. The opening touchdown of the second half for Lane as they recovered the kickoff and then. Turned it into a Daniel Dwight touchdown. He had four touchdowns in that third quarter, three rushing touchdowns, and a fumble return for a touchdown. What turned into a nightmare of a quarter for Stuyvesant. This one put up. Big tried to make the diving catch off the batted ball, but it falls incomplete. It'll be third down and 10. 25 seconds to go. Third down and 10 from the 45-yard line of Lane for Stuyvesant. A couple more plays maybe for this Stuyvesant offense. Set up a screen once again, it's Haggerty. He'll go across the 40, trying to get to the marker, and he's wrestled short of it at the 36-yard line. 10 seconds on the clock. The timeout is going to be taken by Stuyvesant. With two seconds remaining, but Lane along the sideline, beginning the celebration. Fourth and one. Mahmoudov and Stuyvesant. Okay, divert the first down, and then the ball came free. Lane pouncing on it. And they recover it as time expires. There's a late flag on the field. Lane takes the field. Referees look like they're going to wave this flag off. Lane wins this game 42 to 20. And they take the 2012 PSAL Cup Division Championship. In what was a close game at the break, Lane dominated the third quarter. And they close out Stuyvesant in the second half with a three touchdown of victory. Inga Warren and company get this 2012 PSAL Cup Division Championship.
over number two Stuyvesant. Again, they had played during the regular season in week four. Stuyvesant won that game by two touchdowns, 21 to eight. Lane comes back, biggest game of the year for the title. Welcome back for the MSG Varsity Post Game Show. Daniel Dua, the quarterback, Richard Hidalgo. Four touchdowns in the third quarter, three rushing, one defensively. It was a one-score ball game at the half, and you guys just made it an absolute nightmare 12 minutes in the third quarter. What makes this team so special, and why was the running game so successful against a very good Stuyvesant front line? Well, we f I follow my blocks. My O line was blocking good. And we was, we was all on the same page. We was just all on the same page. They executed good. The front line was pushing up. And that's what happens. We family, we stay close. Phenomenal game managing by your junior starting cornerback. Two rushing touchdowns in the first half for you. It's got to be pretty easy to manage a game like that when your offensive line is just dominating their defense. Yeah, it really is. Because once I set a hit, my line was pushing. I stepped back, red, hit the hole. Hey, guys, well played. Congratulations. Well-deserved title. Go enjoy it. Thank you. For everybody at the MSG Varsity Network, we're done here today. 2012 PSAL Cup Division Championship to Franklin K. Lane, 42 to 20 over Stuyvesant. For everybody at the network, my producer, Tom Zweibel, I'm Pete Mulroy. Thanks, as always, for joining us. We'll talk to you again real soon.